Good morning guys, this is me, Kevin Murphy, on my channel called Narcissistic Abuse, Learning Who I Am Again. This video is going to talk about, oh, excuse me, this video is going to talk about my childhood and uh, the real reason why I experienced childhood bullying. But before I get into that, I'm going to talk a little bit about my childhood as, you know, growing up in the house with my parents and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so up until the age of four and a half, I was the only child. And I was very, very spoiled as a kid. And I see pictures of me with my mom and dad and albums of just me in the in the picture you know in the in the I, you know when i would go to my grandmother's house um i would see like like i was happy as a, i was really happy child and it wasn't until probably a little after my brother was born um certain things started to change like my my dad was was my rock like i did everything with him like he was my he was my everything at that age <clears throat> and I looked at him as like my hero like he was like my he was he was my he was he was definitely my guy and um, you know I, I would do fun things with my mother too but I was really close I was closest with my dad and he would tell me stories of how he bought me gifts and bought me toys and you know every day when he was going to work and, and stuff like that. And I, and I totally believed that. And <clears throat> it wasn't until, like I said, after my brother was born that there was a shift in my relationship with him. I started to feel that we weren't as close anymore. And a part of me felt like, well, maybe it's because there's a new baby in the house and, you know, I have a new sibling and, you know, he's getting all the attention that I used to get. But I feel that it was a lot deeper than that because I remember just being six or seven years old and I went from being put up on a pedestal to being ridiculed about everything that I was doing. And at that time, at six and seven years old, that's when a child is starting to discover who they are or at least trying to discover who they are. And I know I talked about in my last video about love bombing and how it's not just tailored to re romantic relationships, but love bombing can happen with friendships, could happen with your parents, it can happen with any, 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 anybody. So, you know, I got my identity from my, my mom, mom and dad, which you're supposed to get your identity from your mom and dad. So if, if you know, for example, if my dad, my mom and dad said that I was funny. I was funny if they said I was cute then I was cute and you know so on and so forth <clears throat> but I really feel that the devaluation and, and I'll talk about that in other videos about the stages of, of narcissistic abuse in relationships is the love bombing the devaluation stage and then the discard and at that time I felt like I was being devalued because I wasn't, I was starting to try to discover who I was. And I just remember just being, being bombarded with put downs and you can't do this right, you can't do that right. And, you know, I wasn't someone that was, to, was super into sports or anything like that, but my dad was. And he would make me do things like, you need to watch football and you need to do this and you need to do that. And I, re I remember um, a Sunday afternoon when I was probably nine years old watching cartoons and he comes and takes me out of the room and says, you need to watch football and made me sit and watch three hours of football. So um, it's thing it was things like that that I was where I was starting to feel like I lost my dad. I I lost his his ability to love me and I started blaming myself. And what happens is when you when when you are love bombed or you feel that you know you're you're love to the hilt and then all of a sudden phew, 
it's it's gone and you're you're being ridiculed about everything you do it's it's a de- it's devastating so i recall a time when i was um i was in high school i'm 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 from new jersey and <clears throat> i went to a predominantly black high school in new jersey and in the town ta- in the city that i that i grew up in and um i recall a situation where there was this there was this guy that i really 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 wanted to be like he was confident he had a he had a lot of luck with girls and things like that and <clears throat> i felt that if i wasn't getting the nurture and the the um the appreciation at home I'm going to go out there and try to get it from someone else. So this guy, I, I didn't really know him that well. I would see him around when I, when we went to middle school together. And I also just saw him around, um, you know, the high school. But this there was this girl that I was talking to at the time who I was really friend, good friends with. <clears throat> she, Me and this girl used to, we weren't going together, but we, she and I, we, we just hung out together a lot and whatever. And she, she was a hot mess herself and I had she she knew this guy that I was talking that I'm talking about and I told her I said that I, I really I would I mean it was almost an obsession I really really wanted to be friends with this guy and <clears throat> I felt I felt that by just being associated with him then I would I would get girlfriends and 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 have friends and stuff like that, and um, <clears throat> so I had her go. I had the girl go up to him and tell her to to tell him that I wanted to be friends, you know, be friends with him. And that's another thing that us narcissistic uh, abuse survivors will do. We say the damnest things and do the damnest things, and. I mean, and we don't we don't realize it until it's already done that, you know, some of the things that come out of our mouth and some of the things that we do is incredibly socially inappropriate and socially awkward. But anyway, so um, she went up to him and she said, you know, Kevin Murphy really wants to be your friend. And, you know, he's, you know, he, he like he likes you as a friend and he wants, he wants to, you know, he wants to get to, he wants to get to know you and things like that. And I'm just, just saying, saying what I'm saying now is just, it, you know, I feel like, gosh, Kevin, you need your ass kicked for, for going up, you know, for, for even going through that. Because if I knew what I, then what I know now, I, I wouldn't have said anything to her and I wouldn't have even been in a situation like that. So he tells this girl that I was friends with at the time, um, I don't want to be friends with Kevin Murphy. He's gay and he's a queer and he's all this other stuff. And so, you know, I started, you know, I I felt really crappy at when she told me what he said. And again, I don't remember verbatim everything that was said, but I know that, you know, he he wasn't interested in being friends with me. And so one thing as a narc abuse survivor <clears throat> or victim or whatever you want to call call it, um, we do not deal with rejection really well. And I started doing some very, 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 very stupid, weird things. And, you know, it was like a form of acting out. Like I talked about before, you, you, you start, you, you, in the home, you're not allowed to express any emotion. The narcissist is the only person that's in the house that's supposed to be angry. The narcissist is the only person in the house that's supposed to feel any kind of feelings. You are supposed to be like a blank canvas and not think anything, not say nothing, and just be, just just be. And so that was my way of acting out. The way that I wanted to show my dad that I was hurting, I was showing this person, this guy at the school. And the very thing that I was trying to avoid was happening because the other kids started finding out what I was doing, you know, um... The police got involved. I prank called this guy's house for two months straight 
almost every day because and and getting other people to um to try to convince him of why he should be friends with me and so you know as a and this is why it's important to heal and it's important to get your life together because us narc abuse survivors we will do we will do some of the thing we'll we'll do some things out of out of operating out of our own pain and operating out of our own hurt that we will later regret and our and and it'll make our life even more it's almost like you think your life is a shit show now it's going to be even more of one if you when you act out and 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 behave in the way that you do <clears throat> so i ended up having to transfer schools because of the fact that um the damage was done and so i went to another school that was not too far from where i where i grew up and some of the same things was happening at that school it wasn't me trying to be friends with anyone like that or any or i wasn't in in a situation like that anymore but it was the same thing where um i was being bullied and and things like that and then i started realizing that The narcissist, you know, like my, my, you know, the narcissist in my life at the time was doing things to, to perpetuate that bullying. You know, like I went to school with tight ass pants and tight shirts and things like that. And the other kids was wearing like Timberland boots and uh, baseball hats. And the I remember these big 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 behind chains we used to wear around our neck thinking we were so cool and whatnot and you know and that is the beauty of journaling and the beauty of of prayer and things like that because it was during those times of prayer and journaling that I really started to discover where this was coming from and this is not a channel to bash my dad or to bash my mom or anything like that because <clears throat> at the end of the day, I still love my parents. And um this is this is just this is just a cha- this is a channel to to heal. This is a channel to um to get information about what you've been through and to find ways to to reconcile with your past and if you have to go no contact or low contact or you know or whatever it is that you choose to do you can do it from a place of peace you can do it from a place of I'm trying to heal instead of doing it from a place of anger, bitterness, or smearing or slamming the narcissist. Because then if we're doing that, we're no better than the narcissist. Then we're doing a smear campaign on the on, on them. So um, <clears throat> I've learned to um, not chase after people. I don't chase after nobody's for nobody for love. I don't chase after nobody for for um for friendship or anything like that. And when you learn to love yourself and you learn to heal from that abuse, you you stop trying to look for that surrogate dad or that surrogate brother or that surrogate sister or that surrogate mom or that surrogate whoever. And <clears throat> yeah, so I I've learned so much just through my journey and I learned because for years for that situation that happened with that with that guy, I I blamed myself for years. And, you know, I said that, you know, it, is, is this who I am? Am I a crazy person? Am I, you know, and you're not. I'm, I know I'm not. And and if you find yourself acting out in ways like that, know that you're not crazy know that there's nothing wrong with you, know that you're not a stalker, know that you're not a weirdo, that you, you're you operating out of your own hurt, you're operating out of your own pain, and that's why it's incredibly important for you to work on yourself and to really heal from that, from that wound, from that original wound, and work on that. 
Don't dismiss it. Don't sweep it under the rug. Really deal with it. And it's hard. It's very, very hard to deal with it. But you have to deal with it. It's it's in it's within that original wound that you are able to you're able to really you you're able to really have your aha moment. And yeah, so that's that's what happened with me through praying and journaling and just you know, learning that it's not my fault. I'm not a crazy person. I have learned to forgive myself for that situation. And I've never <clears throat> done anything like that again. <clears throat> so that is that is just one um that's one video I'm I'm getting I'm running out of time. So um I'm gonna do another video um on more experiences that I've had with narcissistic abuse and um and again these people and these situations are the effect they're not the cause that guy that I went to high school with was not the cause he was the effect of the fact that I did not feel loved that I did not feel appreciated anymore and that cause is something that you have to deal with so that way you won't have another a, a situation where you're trying to chase after someone for validation and for love and for support and you know you you don't want to do that it's just it's not it's it's no good so stay tuned for more videos this is Kevin Murphy and i hope all of you enjoy your holiday for those who are off like i am and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Bye.